Hi, and welcome to the Ontario Pesticide Vendor Certification Course. My name is Steve Speller. In this session today, we're going to discuss the calibration of a sprayer, applying the right amount of pesticide, and what records we should keep of those applications. First off, a calibration is a measurement of the application rate of your spray equipment, including a test of each nozzle. It's very important that we check each nozzle. In modern sprayers, we have a lot of computerized equipment that will give us an instant readout of the total application coming out of a sprayer at any given time. However, that is across the entire boom of the sprayer. We could have some nozzles that are partially plugged that are not putting out enough product, or we could have nozzles that are worn out and are putting way too much out, yet our overall volume is correct. So it's important that we test each nozzle. Why should we calibrate? We don't want to have incorrect amount of pesticide in the field, either over applying or under applying. We want to make sure that we get the label rate put where we want it. We should calibrate at the start of each season for sure. We should also calibrate if there's been any major changes done to the sprayer. Let's say, for example, you have to change a pump, a pressure gauge, or any other critical equipment on the sprayer. You should once again calibrate the equipment manually to make sure that you're getting correct readouts and application rates. There is one method we're going to talk about next uh, to calibrate a sprayer properly. So this is a very simple method. It'll work whether you have a completely manual sprayer with no electronic equipment or whether you have the latest computerized uh, spray equipment. In either case, this method will work. First off, um, we're going to measure out an area in the field that is 50 meters long. We want to make sure that uh, our, we know our ground speed precisely. Yes, you might have GPS in your sprayer, but GPSs have lied as well as radar units. They can be giving you misinformation if not calibrated properly. So to do that, we simply travel uh, that 50 meter length that we've staked out in the field three times, take the average time, and then calculate our ground speed. The next step we need to do is measuring the average nozzle rate in milliliters. There's a number of ways we can do this. A graduated cylinder, as we just saw in the last um, slide, or we can do it by weight. We can use pails, weigh it off, and uh, calculate how many milliliters of product came out of the nozzles in that regard. We need to record all these. The next step is to measure the spacing between the nozzles in meters. And then we can use the following formula. So the sprayer application rate in liters per hectare is the average nozzle rate over all the nozzles in milliliters divided by the nozzle spacing in meters times 0.2. That will give us liters per hectare. There are other conversions in the uh, vendor's manual that you can use if you'd like to have your uh, units in, in gallons per acre or imperial gallons or US gallons per acre. Uh, there's many different ways to calculate it. But for this example, we'll stick with the metric system. Our next area we're going to get into is applying the right amount of pesticide. So we have to do this every time we're going to do a uh, pesticide application, we need to know how much pesticide we need to purchase and use. We need to know how much spray mix to use. So the term spray mix, it talks about the, or refers to the carrier and the pesticide combined. So it's the total output out of the sprayer. It's the mixture of the carrier and the pesticide. So in these questions, we're going to be given the length and width of the field in meters the pesticide rate from the label, the size of the spray tank, and the sprayer application rate. Here's an example. The pesticide rate of, is three liters per hectare. You calibrate your sprayer and the application rate is 50 liters per hectare output. Your spray tank holds 400 liters of spray mix and the field that we're applying to is 500 meters long by 200 meters wide. 
So the first question is, how many hectares is in this field that we need to spray? Because it's a rectangular field, it's, it's fairly simple, length times width. So from our question, we know it's 500 meters long by 200 meters wide. We also know that there's 10,000 square meters in a hectare. When we multiply that out, we calculate that we have 10 hectares in this particular field. If you're doing this for the first time, it's really useful to write the units behind all the numbers that you write down in your formulas. It just helps to keep things straight. Maybe you're an old pro and you've done this thousands of times, and some of these you'd literally do in your head without writing them down. But for those that are not comfortable with this, uh, it really helps to write out the units behind each uh, number so you know what that number means for sure. The next question you'll get asked is how many liters of pesticide will you need to spray the whole field? Again, we look at the area to spray, which we calculated in the previous question, times the pesticide rate that's given in the question. So it's 10 hectares times the three liters per hectare. So we're going to need to have 30 liters of pesticide to spray this whole field. Again, use Mark down the uh, units and it helps to keep things straight. The next question is, how many hectares can we spray with one full tank? So the formula to calculate that is the tank size divided by the sprayer application rate. So from the question above, we know that our sprayer is a 400 liter sprayer when it's right full. The application rate after our calibration showed us that we have an output of 50 liters per hectare and therefore we can spray eight hectares with each full tank of spray. So now we're going to go and mix a full tank of spray. So how many liters of pesticide should you add to one full tank of the sprayer? To calculate that, we know the area sprayed by one tank, which we just calculated, times the pesticide rate. So in this case, we have a sprayer that'll do eight hectares. Our application rate is still 3 liters per hectare. So in each sp full sprayer, we're going to add 24 liters. So how do we do that physically? We're going to fill that sprayer like the one-third to one-half full of water or carrier of some type. It may be liquid fertilizer. And then we're going to add our 24 liters of that pesticide and let it start to mix and then continue to fill the sprayer till it's completely full. So we now know that we've got 24, or sorry, 400 liters of spray mix in that full sprayer. So we're going to go out and spray that tank off, and then we're going to have to figure out how many, how much we have yet to spray. So after you spray the full tank, how many hectares are left? Simple subtraction. We know that the total area was 10 hectares, and we already sprayed an 8 hectare batch, and so we have to. Two hectares is what we need to spray yet. So how many liters of pesticide should we add to this part tank to do this two hectares? So it's the area left to spray times the pesticide rate, which is two hectares, we just calculated. Three liters per hectare is our pesticide rate. So we need to measure out six liters of pesticide to spray that remaining two hectares. How many liters of spray mix will you need for the part tank? Again, uh, the area left to spray is two hectares. Our spray application rate is 50 liters per hectare. So therefore, we're going to end up with 100 liters in that spray tank. Uh, and that includes the pesticide. So once again, we're going to put half the amount of carrier in that sprayer, so 50 liters. We're going to add our pesticide that we just calculated, the 6 liters, and then we're going to fill it up to 100 liters is where we'll shut off the water. So basically we're going to have a quarter tank to spray the balance of that field. So um, these calculations are the same for any type of sprayer, field sprayer that you may be using. Next we're going to look at um, spraying and using a mixing ratio. Um, you need to spray to control flies in the barn in this example. The total wall area is 800 square meters. 
the instructions on the label tell us to dilute 100 milliliters of fly spray with 3.9 liters of water to make a total of 4 liters. We're supposed to apply that till it runs off the walls, uh, or starts to run off the walls. 4 liters of spray mix will treat 100 square meters of walls. So a little different than, than the field question. So how much spray mix will we need to treat the entire barn? So the area to spray times the sprayer application rate. So 800 square meters is our total wall area we have to deal with. And we're spraying 4 liters per 100 square meters. So when we cross multiply that, that tells us we have to make up 32 liters of spray mix to cover that area. So how much pesticide will we need to mix up to create 32 liters of spray mix? So again, we're using cross multiplication or ratios. So 100 milliliters to 4,000 milliliters uh, times 32,000 milliliters. You'll note in this part of the calculation, we've made sure that we've got the units the same. So we're working with milliliters. We've converted our four liters to milliliters, and we've converted our total 32 uh, liters to milliliters as well. And again, writing in those units really helps. So using that calculation, we're going to need a total of 800 milliliters of pesticide to cover these uh, barn walls. So how much water will we need in total? Again, we know that we need 3.9 liters of water um, per 4 liters of spray mix times 32 liters of total spray mix that we need. And when we calculate that, we're going to need 31.2 liters of water. So again, similar calculation, it's just that we're working with ratios instead of liters per hectare in this instance. The last item we're going to cover off in this video is keeping pesticide records. First of all, why do we keep them? And what information should we record? So we need to keep pesticide records for numerous reasons. Uh, number one, as we get older, our memories aren't as good as they should be. So it's good to keep records of, of pesticides so we can refer back when we're looking at IPM and and dealing with uh, resistance in weeds and insects and diseases. Um, also for crop rotation. So if we have a farm that we have an opportunity perhaps to grow a specialty crop on, uh, but perhaps there's certain pesticides that the carryover from them would not allow you to grow them, it would really be important to double check that, yes, that's what I put on that field last year. Uh, the second thing is, what information should I be recording during my applications? Uh, and I'll give you a list of that in just a moment, but here's a couple things to think about. The person with the best records almost always has the upper hand. That was said by, quoted by a lawyer. And businesses with good records do better, and I believe that to be true. So what should I be recording? And this isn't an exclusive list, but just... Um, everybody should have their own type of form that they feel comfortable doing. But such things as date and time of application, uh, the location and farm name, include a map if necessary. If you're spot spraying, a map is a great way to keep track of, of where you sprayed and where you didn't spray. You should record the crop, the stage that it's at, the condition of it. You should also record the pest and the host that you're going after record the pesticide used, including the rate of the pesticide, uh, the PCP Act number, the mode of action. Again, that helps us out in IPM and keeping track of which uh, families of pesticides we've used on our farms. Equipment used, including the nozzle, uh, speed and pressure, and gallons per acre. Uh, weather conditions, wind direction and speed, sky conditions, um, you know, is there precipitation or when was the last precipitation? Was there a heavy dew? You should record buffer zones uh, so that you can keep track of that. 
Uh, the applicator's name, if you have multiple people in your organization running the sprayer. And as I said earlier, don't trust your memory, write it down. There are also some videos on the Ontario Pesticide Education um, YouTube site, and uh, I would suggest you have a look at them as well for more information. Thank you.